So you can see right here I'm running Manjaro GNOME. This is in a virtual machine, so if any of the graphics are laggy at all, that is the primary, primary reason. But we're going to start off before we go and explore it too much. We're going to go ahead and actually install the system. Now I really do like what they did with the installation process on this system uh, because you don't really set up user accounts or anything through this. So you are immediately put into your partitioning. So for this, I'm going to re uh, erase the entire disk. You do manual partitioning and all that. Uh, select your main master boot record here. Next, install, install now. And that is all you do in the live disk in order to actually install it. So what we're going to do now is pause it real quick and we'll be right back when it is complete. All right, so it's all done. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and restart our system. And then when your system reboots, you're greeted with this screen. So what they did with this is they kind of split the installation process. So you install it. And then when you first boot it, you actually do the languages, the user accounts, and all that fun stuff. Now this is really cool because if you wanted to like install this on a friend's computer, you could do that and then they're actually greeted with the setup wizard so then you don't have to like make their accounts and all that. So it's just something that's really handy. It's what most distributions should do, but they don't. So let's go ahead and move on, select English. Uh, we'll go with the US keyboard. Here is where you have your privacy settings. We pick the time zone, that is my time zone. You could do your online accounts if you'd like to. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. And then about you. So my full name is Brandon Hopkins. And we will set the username just to uh, Brandon. So then we go ahead and next. Here is where you set up your password. So I'm just gonna type one in real quick. All done. And you click the button that says start using Manjaro and then it is actually gonna boot into your system. So the only thing you really missed was this nice little pop-up that comes up when you first boot into your system. That's kind of like a little slideshow tutorial showing you the basics of using GNOME. Now this is really good for somebody who is completely new to this as it will help them navigate the system. And one of the most important things in that little pop-up box is the switch or the layout application. Now that is what we're gonna check out first before anything else is layouts. This is wonderful because it allows you to easily change your system exactly how you want it to look. Whether if you want to go with the customized GNOME Manjaro, a traditional layout, go back and switch to a Unity type style. And we're gonna go through some of these real quick. So the Manjaro layout by default is just your standard GNOME layout, except for the fact it has this little bar here on the side, which is nice. If we go over and switch to GNOME, that can be an option as well. You can see not much changes, but that little bar is now only within this GNOME menu here. Now, for those of you who are switching from Windows, the traditional layout is awesome because it's so close to Windows, it's crazy. You have your icons down here for your applications for you can minimize and maximize there. The start menu is super familiar. So you have all your uh, locations here. You have some settings and stuff here. Then you have all your favorited applications here. You can look through all your programs by category and you have some search functionality here. Now, one thing I think is super cool is this uh, tiling feature right here. So if we apply the tiling layout, go ahead and close this and then close it up here. This is the uh, kind of tiling window manager within GNOME. So I, I don't really know the keyboard shortcuts or if there is even any, but this is can be used very well with a mouse. So for example, let's go ahead and open up a terminal. You can see it tiles full screen. And if you wanna open up another application, you just hit this little plus here. You have this little application launcher with your commonly most used applications and you can search for applications here. So just for example, let's open up another terminal, hit this plus and open up another terminal. So you can see it's a tiling window manager type layout. Now as you can see it is a little glitchy with some of the custom theming that they have going on here. I'm gonna go ahead and close it out. Um, it doesn't have to be just terminals, so you can search. So let's open up Firefox in this tab or this window. Let's open up another window with the, uh, let's open up the settings panel. So if we go over to settings, hit enter, it will then open up settings in this window. And you can easily drag and switch these around to however you want them to be. So that's really the basics of how that works. You do have an option here as well to add additional workspaces. So let's say I had a text editing application in this workspace. And then in this one, I wanted to have my uh, calendar application open as well as files. So I could have this workspace, my text editing workspace, 
and then my uh, web browsing workspace here. If I go ahead and move this over here, that'll make a little more sense. So that's basically this tiling manager closing out applications. You just do that up here and you could do that for every single workspace as well. And you have this little search button here, which will kind of bring up the uh, GNOME style search menu. So I can go ahead and close this out. Let's open up our layouts application again, and let's switch to just the Manjaro layout for the rest of this video. Cause we're gonna go over some of the applications that are pre-installed and take a look at the terminal again to kind of see how the custom theming they have with that. So as far as applications go, you saw the uh, when they came on, it was a little glitchy. That's because of VirtualBox. On your actual system, this will look awesome. Uh, under System Tools, you have some stuff that you'd expect. Settings, Printers, um, System Monitor. So if you open up the System Monitor application, it is just your standard GNOME System Monitor. We'll go back over here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead to the application, well, the uh, Layout Switcher. And let's go with the traditional layout for the rest of this. So apply that. So then everything's kind of categorized for us. So under accessories, you can see you have files. That's your standard GNOME files. You have GNOME extensions. Now here, they add quite a bit of extensions for you. Uh, some of them are enabled, such as the arc menu. That's the uh, menu they're using down here. So if we go to our arc menu settings, a lot of things that you wouldn't expect in a base GNOME install to be customizable actually is through this Manjaro flavor. So just as a little example, let's go down to button appearance. Uh, under icon, we can browse icons and you can change this little Manjaro logo to really whatever you want. So let's go over to distro icons. You see they have a lot available. Let's say I wanted to not admit I used a Manjaro and go and have a pure arch logo. Close that out and now you can see that my start menu is the arch logo. And that's really just one aspect of it. Basically everything you see is customizable to some sort of extent. And all these arc menu settings are just these settings for the menu. And that's through the uh, GNOME extensions application here. Another thing that's pretty cool that they do include is the night theme switcher extension. So that's disabled but you could go ahead and enable it. And what this lets you do is actually uh, change the theme based on what time it is. So there's extensions and things like that out there that, for example, a popular one kind of changes the hue from the blues to more of a uh, orangey tint on your screen. It's better for the eyes. But this one allows you to change the aspects of your theme, including GTK, shell, icons, cursor themes backgrounds and you can actually initiate commands at certain times of the day so that, that's just a really cool extension um, there's a lot more they include in here I don't have time to go over everything they even have the uh, pop shell in here if that's something you're interested in but they include a lot out of the get-go where there's so much that you can customize in this that at a point you can make it so it doesn't even feel like you're a gnome anymore uh, if I go to all applications accessories you saw most of this this is basically everything you'd expect uh, go back under graphics, we have GThumb, so not too much going on there. Internet, we have Geary, Firefox, and Transmission. For some of our default internet applications, Office has only Office, out of the gate by the looks of it, so I'm not really too much of a fan of that. LibreOffice is better in my opinion. Uh, you have Cheese, Lollipop, a lot of the standard default applications. One thing, if you've never been in a Manjaro-based operating system, they have the Manjaro Settings Manager, so that might be on their other, yeah. So this little utility is cool because it will let you do things such as upgrade your kernel through here, change your time and date settings. One thing I did have to do, I was having an issue getting the actual terminal application to launch, and that was just a little bug that you fix by going over to your locale settings, and then you have to re-enter English and then the terminal will open. It's a weird bug, but it is there. Speaking of terminal, let's go ahead and open up the terminal real quick. This is kind of another thing that they have customized for you out of the gate, which just makes it really, really nice. So here you have your little Manjaro icon and the directories look cool. So if I CD into my root directory, you can see the icon changes to a lock. And then from there I could like CD into my uh, home. And you saw there if I do an invalid command, it will turn red so I can know like, hey, what I'm typing isn't going to work out very well. And it stays green if it's going to be good. So I can CD into home. You can see that the file tree will just keep going. Now from there, if I did CD into my actual username, it will switch to the home icon. And I can then CD into like videos or whoops, 
Well, that's actually a good example too. If you type in a command that doesn't work, you get a little X. You have your error message, so you know whatever you tried to do didn't work. So here you can now see that it's my home directory and videos and the icon changed into a folder. And a lot of this is customizable as well. So if I go up here and I go to preferences, over here, if I go down to Manjaro, a lot of what you just saw is customizable. So that's really about the extent of this. If I go down here and go to the, uh, if I go down here, there's no nothing to update, but right here it actually shows a list of all the things available to update on your system. If we look at here, the uh, this is really nice. They have the weather down here, your calendar, all your notifications, and then everything here that you'd expect. And this will slightly change based on the actual layout that you are using. So I do hope that you enjoyed this look at Manjaro, particularly this GNOME version and some of the layout options they have. I think it's fantastic, especially somebody who is one new to Linux and wants that uh, availability to be able to customize everything without having to go through too much trouble or without even having to use the terminal hardly at all. Honestly, at this point, if I were to recommend a distribution to a new user, I'd probably go with this Manjaro GNOME just because one, it's Arch, so everybody ends up going with an <laughs> Arch-based system eventually. I know not everybody, but a lot of people migrate to that because they want that rolling release update structure. So this gets them in the door right away, and it's user-friendly enough that they're not going to have any significant issues. So other than that, I do hope you have a beautiful day. Please like this video if you did, subscribe to my channel, and ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. Now the thing that I'm curious about is what was the distribution you started out with? Uh, for most people it was or it is Ubuntu. Ubuntu seems to be the go-to starting distribution. Uh, for me it was Linux Mint because I was looking for something close to Windows 10. Well actually Windows 7 at the time. But knowing what you guys all used was, well is a curiosity of mine. So once again have a beautiful day and goodbye.